Well, I was shocked. Mm. Imagine in the worst scenario, one of them goes bad. Mm. You will have to evacuate practically all the six. Mm. And if each one of them ultimately cost $10 billion, $60 billion to gone down the drain. Mm. And then square miles, at least uh, several dozen square miles of area will have to be evacuated for the future. Mm -hmm. You can forget about your concrete coast. Mm -hmm. And now I wish you see that uh, movie called China Syndrome. Mm -hmm. And that uh, ran in the 1960s and 70s. And mm -hmm. some of them are like, like exaggerated. Mm -hmm. But it does give you the consequences of what happens if yeah. even one of them gives problems. Mm -hmm. And if all of them are linked together by a computer and all that, <laughs> I don't have to tell you, it's probably much worse. Mm. Yeah. So I, I, I would never, never recommend anybody building more than one. one I do, but uh, even that, before you do that, you have to ask a question, something. Mm. In our country, in India, we say that about 35 to 40 percent of the power mm. is lost, both in transmission losses installation losses and stolen. Mm. Should we be doing something about it first? Mm. Should we be spending that money in doing it? Secondly, energy efficiency. The Japanese have done a remarkable job of energy efficiency and the amount of uh, uh, changes in equipment to consume less energy but produce the same good results when we are consuming a lot more energy. Like say, for example, your pumps are working, so many of them. Mm. And they probably consume, say, 200 rupees worth of electricity. Mm. Today, if we go about carefully, we can probably get the same amount of water from a pump costing about half the electricity. Mm. Should we be focusing on those things? Mm. So one is the stopping of this theft and leakage by technical, by technical changes and management changes to improving the energy efficiency. Mm. And third thing is the consumption of electricity. Mm. You know, I mean, I come every year to, you know, to, to India, mm. and uh, I live in India as usual, and I've got... But when I come and see these malls and all, I'm appalled to see that some of these malls are more lighting than the malls in America. Mm. Should, I know that the total amount of electricity consumed by malls may not be significant, mm. but where is our mindset in this direction? That's more important than going and building a reactor. Mm -hmm. Then again, uh, I understand that the reactors we are looking at is 1,650 megawatts. Mm, that'll be one of the largest in the world. Will be the largest in the world. Will and there's certainly no need to be proud of it. Mm. Because we somehow feel that largest and the greatest is one, but it can give you much bigger problems. Mm. When the United States scaled up from uh, from a low level to somewhere around 1,200, we ran into immense problems. Mm -hmm. It involved immense increase in cost and all that. Mm -hmm. So now if you go from 1,200 to 1,650, mm -hmm. problems are even more, costs are even more. Mm -hmm. I was just reading on uh, the internet that the Russians are proposing plants which are about 1,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, how many power plants do we have, uh, nuclear power plants we have in India? What is their efficiency? Uh, from whatever I have read, it looks like our efficiency is somewhere around 50-55%. Should we be working on improving that efficiency? Absolutely. It's, it's very, very difficult to understand how people could make such a decision. Now, <clears throat> like uh, America has not built any power plants in the last 20-25 years. Uh, many of the developed nations have not done that, but France uh, apparently have gone ahead and done it and France is one of the untested technologies what, what is coming to India. So now all over the world there is a kind of a, a protest against it. So how has France been able to do that? I mean, don't their own people or the entire rest of Europe think that it's unsafe? Yes, France's uh, generation of uh, nuclear power is very high, so is Japan. Many of these countries have very few resources they have built and successfully operated till now. Uh, nuclear power plants. Mm. But there has always been a movement in, in uh, France and Germany mm. uh, to stop building. In fact, a few years ago there was a movement in mm. Germany, I think, they wanted to dismantle or decommission the existing power plants. Mm. 
So there are a lot of people are fighting in Europe not to build power plants and because they know the dangers of it. But the whole thing will come into an entirely different picture if there is one accident of a major nature in Europe. Europe is a fairly packed area mm. and even in country like Bulgaria if one of them goes sour, mm. Germany and France will all be affected about it. Mm. Lot of thoughtful people are concerned about this and why for example the French people some 15 years ago they said they would build a, a reprocessing plant mm. uh, So and they started and they were using liquid sodium as a coolant. And sodium, as you know, even high school chemistry, in the normal exposure yeah. to atmosphere, it yeah, catches fire. Yeah. To imagine a super cooled sodium mm. as a coolant. Mm. And after I had spent a few millions of dollars, there's a big fire. Oh. And to the best of my knowledge, they have not done anything about it. So people who are aware of many are aware of these dangers. Mm. It is not that uh, it has been a, a gung-ho operation in which any country can build anywhere they want. A tremendous lot of protest. Yes, yeah. Now you're also talking something about spent fuel and the storage of spent fuel. How does it go about? Now that is something nobody has yet thought about. At least not from what I have read. So could you elaborate on that since you worked on it? Spent fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Spent fuel is a very clean green fuel. <laughs> the only thing is, when you take out after you have uh, use of the fuel for generating electricity, uh, it has to be taken out and stored somewhere, and uh, what we call the life of that spent fuel. Yeah. You know, we call it half-life. Anyway, before there was a life of a spent fuel. Mm -hmm. Now I take some uh, charcoal in my house or fuel, I cook and then I take it out and put some water, it's okay, mm -hmm. problem solved. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a spent fuel you can't do it. Mm -hmm. It will take over 24,000 years mm -hmm. for it to become half as Dangerous. radioactive and dangerous as it was when we took it out. Mm. In another 24,000 years, <coughs> it becomes one part. Mm. So right now, in the most of the world, including all the sites in the United States, mm. the spent fuel is all lying in and near the power plant. Oh, that's like US government has built in a place called Yaka Mountain, mm. on the way to Las Vegas, <laughs> a huge facility for receiving and storing these deep in underground mines. They mm. have spent billions of dollars on it. Mm. Just about a year ago they found that that area had an earthquake and not one pound of fuel has been transferred into the Aka Mountain facility. Mm. Everywhere they are in casks and no state is allowing mm. a cask to be transported across its borders because they are worried if it drops down mm. even one cask of spent fuel. Whereas we have literally got tens of thousands of casks in which this fuel has been stored mm -hmm. in various reactors in various places in the United States. Mm -hmm. So the spent fuel is one of the biggest problems the world is facing all over. Mm -hmm. And till now it looks like we have only theoretical solutions and nothing much has happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, like this, another thing that uh, nuclear energy is cheap. Oh uh, yes. Nuclear energy is very cheap. Yeah, it reminds me. You know what happened in the 1950s when they were developing fusion energy? Yeah. Uh, the Senate and the House of the Congress of the uh, United States said fusion energy will make electricity so cheap. Yeah. We don't have to meet it, we can give it free. <laughs> you know that? Wow. And now the that is fusion energy. Now you want this energy, the cost, who knows the real cost? Mm. You can show anything as a cost. Mm. Do you know that the nuclear fuel in the United States is given at least to the power plant operators? If you are buying, uh, say if you are running a coal power plant, what do you do? You go and buy coal, you pay for it and then you use it. And then whatever remnants are there, ash and all of them, you have to process it. Mm. And the subject is, you can calculate the cost. Mm. Well as in a nuclear fuel, what is the real cost? Mm. We don't know. Mm. And if you know the real cost, mm. probably none of these power plants would be even worth building. Mm. So the US government gives it out on lease. Mm. It's 
So it is very difficult to say what the real costs are. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, another thing that uh, not many people are talking about uh, is kind of an emergency measure just in case something minor or major, whatever goes wrong. Uh, how, what should one think about how to go about it? Yeah, good point, because I've not seen any discussion on that at all. When we built the San Onofre nuclear power plant, we didn't have any great emergency procedures for the area surrounding the plant. Of course, the immediate plant, we have some emergency plans and all, which is fairly uh, a good plan that we always have. Uh, when after the Three Mile Island and Chernobyl took place, we got worried. What if there is an incident? How do we communicate to the people? How do we relocate them? We may have to build new roads for them. So we had to do a lot of planning, spend a huge amount of money to provide alerting, uh, to alert the people and also plans to evacuate them, settle them. Like I told you in Chernobyl, there are dozens, I mean hundreds of buildings, multi-story buildings empty. Where do the people go? You have to relocate them. You have to relocate them fast. Otherwise, they will get fried in the radioactivity. Mm. So you need to have elaborate plans for alerting in case of minor incident and evacuating in case of major incidents. Mm. And those costs and all could be humongous. Mm. In a country like ours where our roads and all are still being built, mm. where thousands of people live not in planned communities but near the vicinity of place where they have got jobs. Mm. I think some such thing happened in Bhopal too. Yeah. Not more people died because poor people could not communicate, uh, commute, so they were staying nearby and they were the people who got killed right away. Mm. So what is the cost of this evacuation in case of emergencies? Mm. Now we are talking of emergencies, how to handle a tsunami. Mm. Have you got plans for an emergency in case the nuclear power plants get into trouble? Mm. Let alone the new plants. What about the existing power plants? I don't know if you have any great emergency procedures. Mm. And if you are looking at six units. Mm, that's a Can you imagine the colossal amount of money mm. problems? Mm. I think in, uh, in my uh, humble opinion we need to include that as part of your uh, environmental studies. Mm. Isn't it? Absolutely. Environmental we need to know what is the impact on it, mm. but we need to know what is the impact if there is uh, radiation leakage mm. from a minor leakage to a major disaster. That should also be included and those costs should also be figured in. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what I uh, also understand is that uh, in, in, there have been a few nuclear power plants which have been dismantled. So what are the cost of dismantling, in what situation can they be dismantled, should be dismantled, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, in uh, San Onofre we built uh, one unit in the, I think in the 60s because nobody had built power plants before. We knew how to use the atomic energy to make bombs and all that. And then they built various units and we built an 80 megawatt unit. We called it San Free 1. What I was involved was building of units 2 and 3, which I mentioned to you. That was about 80 megawatts plant. And we had to dismantle it about 5-6 years ago and the dismantling is a big problem and it cost us more than double the original cost of building the power 